and welcome to another video here at Hobbies and Happiness. My name's Dan. And I'm Jim. And today, you know, no one knows how to play Disney Lorcana, except for us. Jim, don't lie to the people. <laughs> don't lie to the people, Jim. Okay, it's a speculation video, <laughs> Dan. All right, all right. What else before, can we make? Before, before, <laughs> we, before we get into it, this is our regular disclaimer. Okay, ready? Yeah. We don't know how to play no this game. No one knows how to play Nobody this game. Nobody knows how to play this game. No one knows. Nobody knows. But, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some time and we're gonna give you our final top 10 mm -hmm. speculations for Disney Lorcana. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, so we sat down and we came up with a list. We went through the cards with a magnifying glass. We, we actually have had some pretty good conversations yeah, yeah, about kind of what we thought. And remember that time where I've said I don't like speculating? Because I don't, I really don't like speculating on stuff. Fun. It was fun. So we're going to go out on a limb. We're going to put ourselves, we're going to put hobbies and happiness out there. Mm -hmm. And our we're going to make is on the line. our reputation is on the line. Yeah. So we're going to make our determinations of what we think is going to happen in Lorcana. Is Jim the greatest card designer of all time? <laughs> no. Do I know a lot about cards? <laughs> kind of. Uh, Do I know exactly how to play this game? Yes. <laughs> yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We will. Yeah. And so, so with that, we're, we're going to get right into it. So we've got 10, 10 speculations. Let's get into it. With, with number one. Number one. Yes. We're going to talk about the win condition, what we think the win condition is. All right, here we go. Number one. Mm -hmm. The first to collect 20 lore is going to be declared the winner in a game of Disney Lorcana. Mm -hmm. What is this based on? Not much, but we do know most of these are based on not much, but actually some of them there, we do have some backup, mm -hmm. some information, mm -hmm. which which kind of leads us to our conclusion. This one, we do know that there have been other articles that have come out that said that have essentially been, the point has been made that characters, these glimmers are going to go on quests and gain lore. So we think those pips, bottom right corner, it has been confirmed, those are called lore. I think the lore is going to be added to your pool of lore points, okay? When are you gonna be able to do that? On your turn, sometime on your turn, you're gonna be able to use your glimmers to collect this lore. Yeah. And 1v1, we think it's gonna be first to 20. 20. Multiplayer, we yeah. think we think it, that's gonna decrease. Yeah. Now, some people can think the number is gonna go up, but that's just, not only is the game already more difficult throwing more players into it, you're now making it more difficult throwing in more lore counters. That is, doesn't really make sense. Lower the number of lore counters you're going to need because now you have three other players or however many other players mm -hmm. to go up against. Mm -hmm. Now, now the other thing is, did we decide when this is gonna be checked? We didn't. But I think, I do think, I think, I do think it's gonna be the end of your turn. I think it's going to be checked at the end of your, do you think it's gonna be end of your turn? See, we don't know. Oh, <laughs> is it gonna be the end of your turn or the beginning of this your turn? This is the one that's always throwing me into a yes, loop here. Yes. Because Talk if, about there's, it. if there's a lot of really good interaction at instant speed, spoilers, um, <laughs> then it can be end of turn effect to where once you have this amount, you win the game. Mm -hmm. If there's not a lot of it, I do think it will have to go around the table, go back to your turn, because if I'm just the first one to do it, and then at that point, going first would give you a very big advantage mm -hmm. versus yeah. your opponent. Versus your opponent, yeah. Then it would have to go around the table once until you can win the game. Mm -hmm. Would you be more confident at this point to say your lore is gonna be checked at the beginning of your turn to see if if to see if you win the game. If you had to choose at this point in time, would you say that it will be checked at the beginning of your turn or the end of your turn? I will say beginning of the turn just to kind of play around the advantage of going first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because now that gives every single other player another turn, which that you pretty much had to go into. Right. Uh, the, win the game or get you out of winning the game. Right. Right, and I tend to agree with that. So, so number one, it's gonna be win condition. First to gain 20 lore, 1v1, down to 10. Down to, down 10. to 10 for multiplayer is what we think, mm -hmm. and then that'll be checked at the beginning of your turn. So that's three kind of rolled, in, rolled into one. Yeah. Number two, we have 
the lore points can be interacted with. Going off, directly going off of number one with, with our whole win condition. As you accumulate this lore throughout the game, we do think it's gonna be added to your pool of lore, and we think it's gonna be represented by tokens in game, mm -hmm. but I do think your opponents are gonna be able to interact with it. There has to be. Yeah, I mean, if, that, if that's your main win condition, there's gonna have to be some sort of way mm -hmm. to interact with with that. Now, here's here's a question that I just thought about thought about right okay. now, okay? Do you think there's going to be cards that basically are going to say gain an X amount of lore lore points? Ooh. I could see it, but then at that point, what would really be the difference between tapping to reap and tap to use that ability? Unless it's enter mm -hmm. the battlefield and gain a lore counter? Right, right. And I think I think you'd also have to explain it within the context of the story, yeah. with the story elements. So yeah. I would say no, but like I can see, I can see it. Being I can a thing. see it being a thing. Um, I mean, as long as it gets explained, like mm -hmm. within the context of the game, I, I can see it. But again, I mean, if we're saying lore can be interacted with, like, what's stopping Ravensburger yeah. from printing a card that essentially does something similar? Because yeah. again, don't forget, guys, nobody knows how to play this <laughs> game right now. <laughs> My favorite saying. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So so number two, the lore is going to be able to be interacted with in some way, shape, or form. Number three, this is a good one. The flourish <laughs> on the card, on, on on the cards that's behind what we think is the cost. cost. Has to be the cost. That means you can use that card as a resource. So you're gonna be able to use that card and put it down either face down, face up, whatever. Well, you'd, it'd have to be face up. Yeah, so face it, up. it would have to be face mm -hmm. up. Multi-use cards. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. But that is gonna be able to be used as a resource, okay? Now, because these cards each have a color, a s distinct color, yep. It will tap, exert, to add that resource to your resource pool. That's what I think. What is that based off of? What is that based off? Literally nothing. 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 I even guess why. <laughs> no one knows how to play this game. <laughs> but I for for weeks, for weeks, I have been I have been struggling with and like many in the community have, of yeah. what does this flourish mean? There have been talks about you can only play it on your turn, or maybe if it doesn't mean you, it has flash, you can play it on your opponent's turn. Mm. Who knows? What what does it do? What does it do? That's what I think. I just think that it, it has to be differentiated with, with the cards that don't have it. Yep. What is it? Uh, that's just what I'm going with. I, I don't know why, but that's just what I think. If I'm proven wrong, I'm proven wrong. But we're putting it out there right now, guys. Mm -hmm. That's the resource, and that's how you're gonna be able to do it. You're gonna play the card with the flourish that's gonna be used as a resource. So we have three things the cards can do. Attack or challenge, whatever you wanna call it. Uh -huh. Uh, reap for your lore counters or tap for mana. Reap, quest, whatever you want to call whatever it. Whatever you want to call it. I do think it's going to be called quest. Probably. It's probably going to be called <laughs> questing. But yeah, so so there you go. The flourish means it can be used as a resource. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have number four. And this is probably one of the best points, I think, on this list. No resource cards. No lands. No energies. Get all of that out of my, my deck. I don't want to <laughs> see it. I don't want to get mana flooded. I don't want to get land screwed. I just want my cards. That's it. So there's a couple things that this that that I think that this is based off of, okay? Mm -hmm. We do know that a deck size it's a 60 card deck. Yeah. It is a 60 card deck. If I'm if we're wrong on this, then we're wrong on this. <laughs> and this kind of came with what I said is a flourish. Yep. Because I said that that's a flourish, I'm like, okay, if that's the case, then there's got there, there can't be a resource. There, but they, there are monsters that have ramp man and magic. Why can't this have land and ramp cards? It could. It could. I just, ah, oh man. Everything's a ramp Every card. <laughs> it's like that meme with the butterflies. <laughs> Why not everything? Yeah. The, the entire land system in Magic has been one of the most ill thought about, I, mean, I don't want to say ill thought about, but no one likes it. Nobody likes it, but, but. It's the, also the most iconic, I think. It is, it is. But the land system is the one mechanic that, that has led to the, the most amount of non-games in history of any game, I think. I mean, the concept of flooded and mana screwed mm -hmm. with a game that does not have a resource system Are like that. Are we talking that? RNG versus skill? <laughs> Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. But again, if you eliminate that, yeah. if you eliminate that that 
RNG, which we're not eliminating RNG entirely, yep. right? But if you're eliminating that facet of RNG, mm -hmm. I think that does lead to a better play experience. The worst feeling in all of card games is not being able to play your cards. Mm -hmm. Like I want to be able to play my cards. I would much rather play the cards that are in my hand and not be able to play the cards I want to, but still be able to play the cards that are in my hand, right. than not be able to play them at all. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's why I think a system that and I generally prefer systems that do not have specific resource cards and have cards that can act as a resource or I'm able to play that card. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'd rather have something like that. So right. that's kind of why we're saying there's gonna be no resource cards in Lorcana. That leads us to number five. I think on your turn, you're gonna draw two cards for your turn. There are other games out on the market, two that I am aware of, Final Fantasy TCG, mm -hmm. and I believe Versus System 2 PCG. Yes. I believe in both of those games, on your turn, you draw two cards from your deck. Like Final Fantasy, um, like we said, for Lorcana, where we said there's gonna be no resource specific cards, yeah. Final Fantasy does have something similar. Now they do have backups, yeah. which you can use, uh, which are, those are the only cards you can use as, res as resources. Mm -hmm. So that is something similar. However, versus system, all cards can be used as resources, okay? But because of that, we just, I, I think you're gonna be able to draw two cards. Yeah. There's based off of nothing. If you're utilizing cards in your hand as resources to pay for some things, then you need to have a way to be able to get more cards into your hands. Because with a system like Magic where you have lands, not mm -hmm. every card can be used as a resource. Yeah. So when you get mana, when you get flooded or mana screwed, mm -hmm. I don't have the ability to play a resource in my hand. I'd much rather have the choice of saying, yes, I can do it and just not play it. 100%. And then having all cards be able to be used as resources gives, that, gives you player agency of what I'm able to do with my cards mm -hmm. or not do with my cards. Again, number five, you're gonna draw two cards on your turn. Next up on the list, number six, there will be location cards. Pokemon has stadiums, Yu-Gi-Oh has field spell cards, and Magic has global enchantments. They do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> now, we, we can even talk about enchantments too here in a second, because yeah. um, I do think there's gonna be cards similar mm -hmm. to enchantments in Magic, but I have been saying since the beginning that I want locations to come to the game in it some shape or form, okay? Because of stadiums in, uh, in Pokemon, okay? There are plenty of other games that have these cards that can be used for global effects. And I think it will it can make sense in the story, within, within the context of the game, mm -hmm. of the Illumineers are taking to this certain location in the world of Lorcana. Mm -hmm. They're transported and now they're transported to this other place. I think it's gonna, it can make, it's easy for that to make sense, yeah. right? And so since we've seen this type of mechanic in other games, I do think we're gonna see something similar in Lorcana. And I really, I'm, I'm really hoping, this is the one thing that I'm like really hoping for because I wanna see Elsa's ice castle. I, know, I so want to see that. I want to. I um, need the card. I need it. It's 100%, 100%. So um, if you disagree, let us know in the comment and you're we'll wrong. tell you why you're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> but again, we don't know. We know nothing. So just for like the fifth time, I don't want anybody coming here and saying, these guys lied to me. No, 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 no. We're being up front. We're being, We're being up, up front with I you, okay? I literally lied at the start, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> but you, call, you, we, we took it back. Yeah, we fixed it. We fixed it. We, we took it back. It. So yeah. that's number five. Is going to be locations. Number seven, steel is going to be the neutral color. What I mean by that, okay? I do. I think steel is going to be the color that can be included in any deck. So we do know at this point that decks can have a maximum of two inks, two ink colors. Mm -hmm. I think steel is gonna be that exception, that neutral, that no that color, colorless. that colorless, that yeah. can just be added into any any deck. I'm happy to be proven wrong, happy to be proven wrong. I've kind of been saying that from the start. I don't really have any basis for it because steel's clear. It, it is different from all the other inks, okay? Mm. They have said steel ink, so, you know, they still do have that ink in there, yeah. but everything else is like some sort of stone. Mm -hmm. It's an, it's a natural occurring element mm -hmm. in the universe. Steel is man-made. So yeah. because of that, I'm going with, I think steel is gonna be the neutral color. It can be included in just about any deck. I think Jim disagrees. So why I kind of disagree. Okay. So for Dan, right, going off of the whole magic pie wheel, 
right? Mm -hmm. You have the five colors and color lists that you can use with any other thing. Yeah. First, I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense to me. But then I was also thinking about it in terms of Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Pokemon actually has a steel element yes. with its own resources true. for that. It's That's not true. just you use it with any other card, right? Mm -hmm. Or with any other colors. Well, you can if you're if you're able to. Right. But I wasn't, as soon as I got into Dan's house today, I was like, Dan, I think you're wrong with the neutral and this is why. <laughs> Yep. He's like, save it, save yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> but just so we're clear, your main argument is because Pokemon. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I want to be clear. My reasoning is I don't really have a good basis for this. <laughs> I do not have a good basis for this. Steel's man-made, <laughs> crystals aren't. <laughs> So I'm, I'm telling you now, I do not have a good reason for this. I, it's just something that I think. Yeah. I will, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. There can be I'll more than it. five colors in a game, Dan. <laughs> That's true, <laughs> that's true. But, but all right, that's our number seven. Steel is the neutral color. One of my favorite things on this list, number eight, there is instant speed interaction. Instant speed effects, instant speed, whatever there has to be. Yeah, I, I'm right there. I, I think I, I I really do think there is. Now, up to this point, there has been a lot of talk in the community that many are saying you can only play on your turn and everything no. is going to be at sorcery Wrong. speed. I am saying right now, we are saying, hobbies and happiness, we're saying action cards are going to be instant speed. If Elsa is sorcery speed, garbage. <laughs> True. Now. <laughs> Now, what we mean by sorcery speed is you can is yeah. you can only be played on your turn. Yes, okay, magic so what, brain. When we say instant speed, what we mean is you are able to do stuff on your opponent's turn. Yes. When that's a good question. That's yep. a good question. But we do have another thing that we'll get into here in a second. Um, but I do think you're, you're going to be able to interact with your opponent and your opponent's stuff to some extent on their turn. I think if you can't, then this game will lose a lot of the strategic depth to it. It'll still be there, I think, but I, I think ways. I think when you add instant speed interaction, you just add a completely new layer of depth to that strategic element to any card game. So we're calling it now tap abilities. You're gonna be able to use it. I think tap abilities will always be at instant yeah. speed. You can do that whenever you want. Yeah. Um, but I think the big thing that we're saying is action cards. I do think action cards are gonna be able to be played on your opponent's turn. Mm -hmm. All right, our final two, we talk for the most part about combat. But number nine, combat will not be simultaneous. We're gonna have to explain this a, a little bit here. But what we mean by that is typically, if you think of a game like Magic the Gathering, untap, upkeep, draw, main phase one, combat. Combat phase, if it's my turn, I choose my attackers and where they're going. Well, it's just attacking because you can only attack your opponent. Goes to my opponent. My opponent chooses their cards and if they wanna block with their cards, then all combat resolves, then we move into main phase two. I We think that combat will not be like that, but it will essentially be, if I have five characters on my board, I will choose character one. All right, I'm gonna challenge character one to your character there. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to, okay, now I'm gonna choose this char character two, will then attack one of your other characters and then character three and so on and so forth. So, so we that's kind of how we think it's gonna be. But going off of that, we think it's gonna be, you're gonna be able to have a combined main phase and combat phase. Like it's gonna all happen during the same turn structure, essentially. I do think there's gonna be some like phases to it, like your beginning phase and then your main phase and then your end of phase, something like that. Um, but kind of Jim kind of was the one who kind of kind of talked me mm. into this and through this. What's the big reason you thought that? The biggest reason I thought that was uh, just for diversity inside of a TCG pool, because there's uh, oh yeah, there's not a whole lot of things where you could be like oh right. build and that or make something attack with something right. else, give this thing rush. If if like say you had a card that on attack give another creature rush, mm -hmm. right, and then you can now give your new creature true rush true. Uh, yeah, that's a good point because mm -hmm. I do think it opens up the design space a little bit yeah. more because when you're constrained by these very rigid structures, yeah. then you are kind of limiting yourself from a design space. So yeah, I, I do like that. I do think it does open up the design space. But again, number nine, combat will not be simultaneous. Next up, number 10 on the list. There won't be blockers, but there will be some form of guardian. And so what do we mean by that? What do you mean by guardian, Jim? 
some way to intercept an opponent's attack or their challenge towards one of your creatures. So if, let's say, Mufasa, just throwing a one, random one out there, he could protect any card's name Simba. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great analogy, Or any though. lions, right? <laughs> yeah, any right. lions out on your field right. um, or whatever his subgroup is. Well, it was, it, it's funny you say that, though. <laughs> when we're going through the cards, I'm looking at Simba, and I'm like, Simba's going to have Defender or Taunt or whatever. And yeah. then Jim's like, well, why? I'm like, I don't know. It's just the way the art looks, I guess. <laughs> or, or maybe, who knows, the, the key word will be long live the king. <laughs> 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 wait a minute, that doesn't make sense because oh. Scar did it when when he. Oh wait, I probably uh, shouldn't say the spoilers. K word. <laughs> spoiler. Uh, banished. There we go. Mufasa. Banished Mufasa. Yes, <laughs> correct. We know that there's evasive, so evasive does have some sort of um, evasion, right? Um, but I I do think. I, again, we were talking about this, like adding this keyword or effect adds that added depth yeah. to combat. Because my thinking is if you don't have this type of keyword or type of effect, mm -hmm. combat is just gonna be bland mm -hmm. and pretty easy to figure out what's gonna happen. Like yeah. it's it's just that added strategic depth. It also kind of goes with the, uh, you're attacking with one creature at a time, because mm -hmm. if they have one taunt unit, we'll say taunt, mm -hmm. um, and you have a full lineup, it's like, well, I gotta attack that one guy. Right, right. It just makes a lot more sense of one creature, attack the taunt, attack the guardian, uh, and then you can go off with the other creatures. So just like Hearthstone, right? Yeah, where a bit more like where, where now I've taken care of that unit, mm -hmm. now I'm able to go around and then attack Yep. Um, or challenge these other units that are on the board. Yep. So uh, yeah, number 10, no blockers, but there is gonna be different. And honestly, I think they're gonna call it defenders. Okay. Or no, guardian. Guardian. Uh, I think I, th yeah. I think we'll have, I think the keyword will be guardian. Yeah. Guardians so, of the galaxy. There we go, guardians of the galaxy. Yeah. So that is number 10. All right, so there you have it. That is our top 10 list. Well, it's not even top 10 list, it's just- Dan, before we go, All right. I have a bonus one that Dan doesn't even know about. All right, yes. You ready? I, I, Are ready. you ready for it? Let's go. Number 11. Okay. Greatest card game of all time. <laughs> Dan, <laughs> yeah, why are you surprised? <laughs> He, he had no idea. I literally went off script right there. <laughs> there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Our 11, our 11 inner, oh my goodness. He doesn't even remember the title of what this video is about. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Our 11 speculations for Lorcana. This was fun. This really was a lot of fun. Even yeah, that last one, that was a lot of fun. Um, but I will be, I'm very interested once we find out everything we need to know about how to play this game, mm -hmm. revisiting this and see what we got right and see what we got wrong. So, but with that, we're gonna kick it to you guys. What do you all think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let us know in the comments down below and let us know why. I know that there's gonna be a lot of people that have a, quite a few disagreements with some of these and that's fine, that, that is fine. This, this has been a fun season so far of speculation. So yeah, let us know down below what you all think. But before we get out of here, Jim, where can people find you? On yeah. the internet. Yeah, you guys can find me on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram at Jim Morgan H N H. Find me, Twitter, underscore DG Campbell, Instagram, Daniel.g.campbell. Head over to our website, hobbiesandhappies.com, find links to all of our stuff there. And don't forget, hit that subscribe button so you can be notified whenever we release a new video and like this video if you liked it. And you know what, if you didn't like it, you should like it, like the video, hit that like button, and then let us know why you don't like us yes. or like the video down below. And then we'll be sure to let you know why you're wrong. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thanks everybody for being here. It's a lot of fun. And again, let us know what you think. Yes. And we'll catch you in the next video. See you, everybody. Take care.